Perhaps you saw the thumbnail for this video and thought, how is that even possible? I'll assure you it very much is, but it requires two things. One, that you're shooting your photos in RAW, and two, that you have a little bit of patience. If you're new to Lightroom, I recommend you go back to the tutorial I did last month on start to finish editing in Lightroom. That will get you started. Once you've watched that, come back here because we're gonna talk about a technique that I like to call relighting. What is relighting? In film photography, there was a technique known as dodging and burning. Essentially, during the exposure process, they would cover or uncover portions of the exposure with different objects to either lighten or darken portions of your image. In Lightroom, it gets way more complex than that because now we have masking tools which take that to a whole nother level and instead of just lightening or darkening portions of your image, you can adjust everything from saturation to contrast to texture, and the options are way more exciting. I'm gonna go ahead and make the basic adjustments to this photo so that we can jump right into masking. The first thing I'm gonna do for this image is correct vertical distortion. I'll do that by scrolling down to the transform tab, hitting constrain crop, and then checking vertical. That will correct for my vertical lines. After this, I'm also gonna crop my image. So I actually took this photo as I was on my way home last night and it started to snow. It snowed really heavily earlier last week and you can see that's why there's massive piles of snow on the ground. But with a little bit of snow flurry activity, you kind of have these snowflakes that are just naturally in the picture. I shot this at one over 25, so you have a little bit of that streaking where the snowflakes aren't just perfect dots, but they kind of look like they're going in different directions. You also have the car on the right side which is kind of streaking by and then this car that's ready to go through the intersection with almost like this anamorphic lens distortion which I thought just looked really cool which is partly the reason why I chose this picture out of all the other pictures that I shot. Now here's what my base edit looks like and at first you probably look at it and you go like it looks terrible. Well that's because we have a whole different mix of color temperatures going on here. We have a tungsten light in the foreground which is making the snow look yellow so it doesn't look all that great. We have some blue lights from the car which I've actually now gone ahead and desaturated and then we have the building which has some lights on it but it looks very dark. This is where we're gonna get into masking and start to correct all of those problems just to really make this photo pop and bring emphasis to the building. The first adjustment that I wanna make is gonna to be to select the subject. This will do a pretty good job at getting the building, but it's also gonna pick a lot of the surrounding buildings, so I'm gonna to have to go in and brush those out. Conventionally, we would have to go in and do this all manually, but because now there's a little bit of a smart select feature in Lightroom, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. I'm gonna do that by hitting this subtract, and then I'm gonna grab a brush and then come in here and start manually removing sections of the image that I don't want to be adjusted. And for whatever reason, if you need to add back a portion of the image, you can come in here, hit erase, and then just start to draw back in a portion of the building. Now that my mask is done, I'm gonna do a whole bunch of edits to really make this building pop. Step number one, I wanna improve the exposure. I'm also gonna raise the shadows a little bit, probably drop the whites. I'm gonna increase the saturation just to really get that building to start to stand out and even go in here and boost the color temperature. Now that building is looking way better. In the base edit, I also lowered the overall clarity of the image. So one thing I like to do with my subject is come in here and just raise that back to give it a little bit more contrast. Next, I've got way too much yellow in the snowbank down here. So I'm gonna desaturate that and shift the color temperature and probably drop the exposure as well. I'm gonna grab a linear gradient and just drag that over and say negative exposure. I think I'm also gonna do another mask where I just completely brush this area. You can also come in here and grab auto mask and what that does is as you're brushing, it looks for the edges of objects so that you don't accidentally overshoot and brush too much of the area in. So now if I drag the color temperature down, you can see I'm really starting to desaturate and get that snow looking more natural as opposed to that ugly yellow from the lights that are overhead. I'm gonna add another mask too for some of these smaller snow banks and just come in here and do the exact same thing and brush them out. So step one was getting that building looking good. 
Step two was removing the distractions from the foreground. And I'm also gonna de-emphasize the edges by putting some linear gradients along the side just to darken and then also de-sharpen those areas. I find that helps, especially when you have a subject that you're trying to bring focus to so that the edges with everything that's going on aren't too distracting. I'm gonna come in here and also add a bump in the exposure for the center of my image. Sometimes people will add a vignette Sometimes I'll do it the other way around and just grab this radial gradient, throw it in the center, and then just bump my exposure or even my saturation by a few points just to really hone in the attention on the center of my image. If I have a lot of artificial lights, one of the things I'll tend to do is grab a brush and really try to bring emphasis to those lights. In this case, I'm gonna drop the dehaze. So that's kind of like adding back in haze. I'm gonna bump my exposure and my color temperature and my hue and saturation and just start to brush in some of these areas to make the lights look like they're glowing a little bit more than they would otherwise. If I show you the before and the after, there's before and there's after. Just adds that little bit of extra touch to make the building look warmer. Lightroom also has the ability to automatically detect the sky. For this image, I want to kind of make the snow pop a little bit more and maybe just darken it a little bit overall. It was blue hour, so the sky was still a little bit light and maybe for this image to make the building stand out, I'm gonna darken it just a bit. And I'll do that by dropping the exposure boosting the clarity. Now you can see the snow starts to come through. There's the before, there's the after. I've gone ahead and made a ton more adjustments to this image, including adding a radial gradient to brighten portions of the sky, darken other portions of the sky. I've darkened the foreground and the snow here even more, really to draw in the attention to my building. I've also desaturated and dropped the clarity on some of the side buildings here so that the windows that were there weren't distracting from the windows of the main building. I've also cloned out some of the distracting details such as signs or little lights that were in the wind windows. And with something like this mask, you can see as I'm turning it on and off, the buildings on the side, I, I just darken them a little bit so that they're not too distracting. There's no right or wrong way to use the masking tools. So have a little bit of fun with it and see what you can do with some of your images. If there was anything in this video that maybe you wanted some more explanation on, I'd recommend watching this video. It explains everything I do from start to finish when editing an image like this. Anyways, if you found this helpful, go ahead, leave a comment or hit the like button. That tells YouTube that you felt this video was worth watching so that it recommends it to other people. And until next time, take care.